So my name's Hayley Warren. Um, for a living, I'm a police community support officer for West Mercia Police. I've um, been doing that for six years, and obviously that's um, the way I've got involved down here with the boxing is obviously we work out in the community a lot. We do a lot of projects with Vince, um, working with the vulnerable children. Making that rotation. Well done. Make sure you've got that space in between you, yeah, keeping that depth for case to keep this leg a bit more apart. What do the youngsters and the, the boxers here at this gym, what, what do they think of you when, when you turn up in your police uniform? Do they see you as a friend or a threat or are they used to seeing you um, now? No, I think I always use the blue t-shirt as an example really because um, we're, we're, our role is to get out in the community, visual, get out, um, you know, let people know who you are um, and our main role is to talk to people um, and it's getting that, you know, getting that rapport with them. So a lot of the kids we deal with um, have come from a vulnerable background, they've been through um, maybe disadvantage, um, you know, various things have been through and yeah they have seen a lot where they don't trust the police and so for me it's building back up that relationship um, and encouraging more positive. Um, so it's a bit of a mixture really. Um, sometimes I don't turn up in uniform, I get to know the children first and then when we think it's the right occasion um, I'll turn up in uniform and they're like oh you're in the police and I'm just like yeah I'm the same person it's, this is just the uniform um, so yeah it, it, yeah you sort of judge it you know what's right and what's when not to wear uniform and when obviously you can just turn up so it's just it's just being in a role really you get to know the children as and when the different projects we do. So do you try and give the the children here at the boxing gym some moral guidance or some, some advice on life if that's the right way of putting it? Yeah I suppose um, I'm quite open about my background. I grew up in London, obviously um, quite a rough area that I drew, grew up in and I, I tend to use my own life experience and what I've sort of seen and been through, um, not in detail or anything, but just to use that to my advantage, just to talk to him about, um, you know, how positive it is to come down here, you know, help him focus on something positive, um, build that relationship up. Um, but yeah, it's just life experience I think is great to speak to the kids about and just build that rapport with them. And because the opposition as a police officer, do they look up to you? I'd like to think so, some of them. Some of them it's hard and I think obviously because I've had such a negative experience with the police, I think it, it, some of them can take quite a while to get to. But in my experience, I'd probably say nine times out of ten, um, yeah, I think it gives me an advantage as well when I see them in the gym yeah. and then when I'm out on the streets doing me. certain jobs or something and they come across me, um, they're like, oh, hey, Hayley, hi, Hayley, <laughs> and I've got that rapport ready, whereas I've noticed a difference when an officer come up to them that maybe never met them and they, they go in quite hard straight away and they're like, they just straight away their defence comes up, like, you know, they don't want to work with them and then they just turn up and like straight away it just yeah. calms that situation. So I think, That's yeah, it's great just, just getting aim to aim know them as and speak to them like they want to be spoken to. You know, we're, they're human beings, you know, they want to be respected just as much, you know, as we do. So it's speaking to them at their level, the way they understand. Um, obviously the youngsters obviously talk to a bit differently, you get down to their level. With the older ones, it's a bit like learning the slang words, I suppose, learning how they talk, learning the lingo. Um, yeah, it's just keeping up with them, really, and just getting to know them as who they are and what's happened and understanding them. And just sometimes just being there to listen, because sometimes all they want to do is just sort of offload, and sometimes all they do is just sit there and listen, and like, okay, yeah, well, let's do a bit of training now then, let's crack on. So, actually, I didn't do any boxing before I come to Hereford. Uh, my background was playing football, um, bit of a tomboy when I was younger. Um, come to Hereford, obviously joined the police six years ago, um, sort of come down to the club as a part of the, the role, part of the community to get involved, do some projects, see how we could work together, partnership working. Um, and it went from there really and sort of doing all the projects I've sort of grown to have a love of boxing. Um, I also part of, of doing the other activities down the centre as well. So um, I'm also a mum. Um, so yeah, I just, just love the centre. I think it's great. The atmosphere down here, it's like a massive family. Um, I don't see it, my job, as a chore, I see it, I just love it. I just think it's such a great opportunity for the kids to get involved. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it, there's not many places like it. I think Hereford is unfortunately um, lacking in activities for the children in the area. Um, and the police, um, the boxing centre is just, yeah, amazing really. It's, it needs more of it. 
So how much of a blow to the local community was it when the gym had to close due to the COVID lockdown? Oh, massively. Um, I found in the role we were in that um, we weren't seeing the kids. Quite worrying, really. Um, obviously, they, they had to stay in, um, but we weren't know what they're up to, what they're doing. Um, I found when they started to come back into the gym, they were withdrawn a little bit as well. Um, so it's sort of trying to build that relationship back up. Um, yeah, and you notice obviously the difference with kids that maybe of um, struggling with money, the families. Obviously, we did a lot of work with um, sort of the project with Fit and Fed, where they all get a free lunch. Um, the way I do with that is um, to book them in. I focus on support workers, foster carers, um, social workers, yeah, social workers, all the different teams that work with the vulnerable families, um, early help assessment teams, um, trying to capture the, the children that actually will really need it, more so than the children that are already coming. So it's looking at the kids that actually might not have the opportunity or can't afford to come. So it's giving that opportunity where they can come down, have a go for free, um, and then if they like it, talk about how we can help them in the future. Um, get them booked in, maybe get do a bit of one-on-one -on -one with them. So invite them down over the weekend or after school, and just yeah, just have a go at the gym and just yeah, just go from there really, and just build it again. Uh, you mentioned uh, trying to encourage females to box as well. I'd say even like ten years ago, having any women boxing coaches would have just probably been unheard of. Um, apart from Jane Couch, I can't really think of any other females even involved in boxing. No. Uh, but have, have you noticed over the last I don't know, few years more and more with, uh, girls wanting to box? Um, yeah, definitely. I think obviously being involved with the centre, that I've noticed it that way. Um, obviously the coaches, we've got Lindsay down here that I work alongside as well. Um, so yeah, it's definitely still not loads coming in, but you can definitely see a difference. Obviously you've got a lot more females coming involved with the community stuff and obviously in the club as well, there's a female only session. Um, that um, Lindsay runs alongside that. So definitely, definitely probably say in the last 12 months, definitely I've seen a difference. And, and it's great because it's not just for males. Um, but yeah, it's great to see it. And having a, a female face in yourself and Lindsay, you mentioned here as coaches, that obviously encourages more girls as well? Absolutely. I think it shows that um, it's not just the males in there. They can see that women can do it too. Um, there's not that stigma anymore. I think back then of boxing was just all male and even I growing up would never have thought I'd ever be doing boxing but um, yeah it's great to see really because sports should be open for anyone not just males in any sport not just boxing. What are the main benefits of amateur boxing in general to young people? <sighs> just getting them, giving them the opportunity really to be out there, um, get involved with something, being able to focus on something, being able to achieve something um, you don't have to do it, you know, at a professional level. It just gives the people opportunity to um, be involved in the sport they love, without, you know, and just having fun with it, and you know, and just enjoying it. And I just don't think there's enough out there for the youth these days to do. Um, I've noticed the difference from being a youngster, how we used to have quite a bit to do, and now that you know, out on the streets are just hanging around, bored, stiff, they don't want to do. So, f for me, in my role as well as the police, is encouraging them and letting them know what's out there. Um, getting involved with the club and then taking it as far as they want to go. If they want to go and be part of the squad, they can. If they want to come down um, and just focus on just being like just for fun, they can. There's no pressure, which is great down here. If you want to focus and go as far as you want to, then you've got the support here. But if you just want to come down and have fun, meet some new friends, um, have a laugh, um, then you can do that too. There's no pressure to do either way.